I figure I should talk a little bit more about this uh, hopper fed cap shooter. I can't put that many details in the main video because then it just gets too long and people don't watch it. But for the smaller number of people that are interested in more details, it makes sense to uh, talk about some of the other bits. I actually started working on this machine more than a month ago, but then I started upgrading the server on my website and lots of behind the scenes work and then taxes. So not until last week did I actually get back to working on it. And uh, looking at it on my time-lapse camera, that's this thing here hooked up to this Raspberry Pi computer. Uh, I had uh, basically last week where I was, uh, had a few hours each day working on it. Whereas before this is doing taxes and stuff like that. So I'm about 13 hours of work into this machine. The whole machine is very much a prototype hack in that whatever I temporarily jigged together to try it out, I just kept adding to it. And because I didn't want to wait for glue to dry, all the joints and stuff like that are just put together with hot glue. Hot glue is, is a bit like welding in that you can uh, fill large gaps that way, which uh, makes it easy to put together things that are not very precise. You just squeeze some hot glue in there. And the hot glue is actually surprisingly strong for joining wood as long as it has a good chance to bond. And so what I do is I like to preheat the pieces before I put the glue on so that it doesn't start to harden right away and that way I can squeeze the pieces together and get a nice tight joint. I did use a lot of screws too for the stuff that I thought I might take apart again. And as often happens there is one suggestion that keeps coming up over and over again that I should have done which I thought was obvious enough why I didn't do it. And on this project it was why did I not make this thick enough so that the caps could go in there in either orientation or any orientation? So if the disc had uh, deeper slots, that way a cap could fit it like this or like this, and then I wouldn't have this problem of needing the caps to be in the right orientation. But the problem is with a slot like that, the caps could also get jammed on the edge like that, or two caps in there like that, or like that. And the problem with that is, sure, it'll bring the caps up, but then they'll jam downstream. So I wanted to make sure all the caps came up in this orientation only. And I even sanded the edges of this disc here so that if the cap is in there backwards, it's more likely to slide out. Although it turns out every once in a while, a cap still does make it up there this way. And then usually the cap just gets kicked out, or so, though sometimes, like right now, this one actually got in there backwards and trying to anticipate the next suggestion people will make, well, if I just make this slot narrow so two caps wouldn't fit in there like that, that would solve it, right? Except uh, these two caps are basically the same size as across this cap, which means for this cap to fit in, I need the slot big enough that two could get jammed in there sideways. Of course, a much better solution to this problem would be a vibrating bowl industry like they use in industry, and those devices reliably bring even very complicated parts out of a hopper in always the right orientation. And I really wanted to build a vibrating bowl feeder, but uh, with the means I have and out of wood, I just don't think it would work very well. So this is a uh, pretty good solution for what I need. Because of course, I need something that shoots caps. One thing that I'm really happy with is the idea for this uh, rotary catapult. Because with any catapult, there's always the problem of once this thing is done shooting, there's still quite a bit of momentum in the paddle here, especially if it's shot empty. And so if this thing was restrained from moving further forward by, say, some kind of thing here, uh, which a lot of people would put on a catapult, you've got all this energy just whacking against here, and eventually this part would disintegrate if you do it enough times. But on here, I'm using the same rubber band, the rubber band that is the uh, main rubber band for the other paddle, is the one that absorbs the remaining energy and this actually does bounce forward on here quite a bit just hard to see in fact I had to remake this hub because on the original one I made these pins too short and quite often from shooting empty this thing would kind of get caught on the end of the pin like this although it would tend to reset itself once uh, it rotated around the motor I used is actually one for intermittent duty so if you look on the label here it says duty uh, 2.5 seconds on, 60 seconds off for it to not overheat. And I don't want to blow the thermal fuse on it, so that's why I put it in series with a light bulb to reduce the voltage a bit. Because these intermittent duty motors, they run the core pretty much into saturation. 
So just reducing the voltage a little bit makes a lot of difference. And for overload protection, a uh, light bulb is actually an ideal resistor because it'll indicate when it's dropping a lot of voltage on it by lighting up and also because the resistance on these varies quite a lot. Measuring the resistance of this bulb, my meter says it's 9.5 ohms. So divide 120 volts by 9.6 and you get uh, close to 13 amperes times 120 volts. This light bulb will draw 1.5 kilowatts when the filament is cold. Of course, it only takes milliseconds for that filament to get hot, and since that light bulb draws less than an ampere, once it's hot, it's got over 100 ohms of resistance. And that makes a light bulb like that ideal for avoiding some sort of jam protection because the resistance drops a lot once the motor is overloaded. And let me fix that. And now it's uh, thimmer again. This machine is very much an initial prototype and I thought of quite a few improvements I could still make to it but uh, it works as well as it needs to because it's just for fun and if it's a little bit unreliable that doesn't make it any less fun. Part of me wishes that I really had a need for a machine like that because that would be a good excuse for making a better one. Actually YouTube is really good in terms of creating a need where none exists because I needed that machine to make a good video because stuff like that tends to do fairly well on YouTube. But I also know that version 2 of this machine wouldn't do as well as version 1, even if version 2 worked better. Then again, there's Winter Gatan with his Marble Machine X, and he's been tinkering on that for years now. And lots of people watch his videos, including me. And if you like seeing mechanical systems being debugged, I very much recommend you go and watch Winter Gatan and his Marble Machine X. Maybe someday he'll finish it. But I did think of a grown-up version of playing with this machine. Let me show you. And this is something five-year-olds aren't very good at because the reflex of catching flying objects, that develops relatively late. Those caps are actually not that easy to catch because they tend to bounce off the hands. <laughs> 